is just fantastic. Captain's Log, subdates 21119.2. As the election news has started to die off, and with r and fast approaching, I have granted my crew five minutes of Twitter access a week. Let's see who has the balls to post something mean about me. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we have four subjects I'd like to go through, and before we get into that, I have an honourable mention, and of course I want to promote my Twitch stream for tonight. We're doing some murder fun time, linked below. The honourable mention goes to this person who thinks you can catch MS. If only that's how it worked. This was, by the way, a comment left on Irate Alex's channel. It amused me, because seriously, I liked you before you caught MS. To be honest, we all did, but we don't like to tell him that. <laughs> so to start, we're going to go with Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day is the 11th of November, so yes, we've had a whole week and we missed this one. But something did happen, something quite interesting, and I'll be honest, I want to point at it because it is incredibly disrespectful. There are very few things in this country where I myself have to say, yeah, nah fam, nah and the two-minute silence that I had originally thought was one-minute silence, but apparently it got promoted, is one of those very few things. Every year, most of us, a lot of us, okay, a fair few of us, buy a poppy of some kind. This year, not so easy. So, at least paying some respect with the two-minute silence was about as far as it could go. But that's not what happened, is it? On an ITV show called This Morning, they observed a two-minute silence, where they played a video of a crowd observing the sign of respect at the Garden of Remembrance in Edinburgh. Well, a minute in, an official at City Hall in Belfast and started to thank people for joining him in observing the silence, claiming it was two minutes past eleven after one minute of silence, which is a rather interesting blunder. Now, I should of course say for the sake of it, to those who then went on Twitter and absolutely spurged out, calm yourself down. It was an accident, I will accept that. It was enough of a blunder to force the presenters of the show this morning that was hosting that particular montage to apologise. I should of course add as a final bit, people are free to choose if they want to respect the two minute silence or not, as much as others are free to judge you for that. I don't judge people for it, but I will admit this one's quite amusing, especially as Belfast does in fact share the same time zone as the rest of the United Kingdom. Moving on from that, I want to talk about one of those things that's been championed by this country, especially the City of London and their mayor, and that would be diversity. Diversity in the UK is considered that thing where anyone that isn't white, yeah, that's diverse, which is a rather interesting theme. There's a dance group like that in the UK as well. I find it quite fascinating. It's diverse when there aren't white people represented. And it's with that in mind, we go to the University of London, who, um, who boasts of being one of the most diverse in the UK. Yet in 2017, they failed to admit a single white working class student. On the face of it, that implies no white people at all. No. White people who come from decent upbringings, money especially, yes, they're okay, they got admitted. But there is a running theme that's been prevalent for the last five years that I've been on YouTube, although it's been going on for a little bit longer, and it is the idea that as time has progressed, more and more white working class, especially boys, are less inclined to go into further education. There are many reasons for that. Some believe it's because they want to instead go through a challenging life or a more fulfilling career. Because things like affirmative action and critical race theory have kind of made it difficult for them to fit in elsewhere or make them feel guilty for the colour they are born as. Because apparently that's a bad thing. They are born with privilege. Okay, well I come from a working class background. I can tell you hand on heart, nobody benefited when they were living on three to four pounds a week for a family of four. It's not the easiest, but families make do. Turns out poverty doesn't know race, but there are, because I mentioned class, certain key differences. This information came from a document that detailed plans to improve access to the University of London. In the document that was released, 
white pupils eligible for free school meals are half as likely as their peers from poor ethnic minority families to achieve strong passes at GCSE. They are also more likely to attend a failing school. Because of the changes, all ethnic minority groups in England are now on average more likely to go to university than their white British peers. Now, I do want to add for the sake of it, I don't think it matters what the race of the student is, but it is interesting that some people have taken this information and divided it by race to show the disparities. Usually those disparities are, well, the other way round, aren't they? Which usually causes a bit of an uproar. This article, I've only seen one of it. There aren't many of them around. Who'd have thunk it? This does, though, tell me the UCAS main scheme that deals with admittance has fundamentally failed, along with any encouragement from education to try and get more people involved to further their lives, or careers, or prospects, depending on which perspective you have of this. My view is, I don't care. I went to university, eh, now I'm a cleaner. That tells you everything you need to know about academia. It's filled with political snakes. To move on from that, I'd like to now talk briefly about, for the third week in a row now, the ongoing saga with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. If you'd like greater context, I would defer you to two previous exhibitions of stupid people, where I go into better detail about what had happened with The Sun, a tabloid in the UK. The fallout from last week was that Johnny Depp was asked to resign from Fantastic Beasts as Gellert Grindelwald. Vold? Wald? Vold? Doesn't matter. He accepted. He got paid. Many believe now his career in Hollywood is over. Amber Heard, though, will be returning to Aquaman 2. This has led to a bit of uproar, because unlike Johnny Depp, there is a plethora, a mountain, one of the largest mountains, in fact, in the world, of evidence against Amber Heard for being a domestic abuser. Not just in her relationship with Johnny Depp, though. In fact, in every relationship prior to Johnny Depp. But... Even with all that evidence there, Warner Brothers have decided, bye-bye Johnny, hello Amber. This has caused such a stir. Hundreds of thousands have signed a petition to get her removed from Aquaman. Because if anyone's career deserves to be blackballed, it's hers. And that's me saying that. Quite frankly, the fact Warner Brothers is entertaining this is enough of a reason for me to not want to watch or endorse anything they produce because they've taken a side and they've taken the wrong one. The claim that she will be returning, by the way, comes from Amber Heard herself. It is yet to be greenlit, Aquaman 2 that is, so we're not entirely sure at all what's going on. It is at best speculation, but if anyone knows anything, it may as well be somebody who's meant to be in it. The final thing I'd like to discuss concerns a number of clips that have been doing their rounds for the better part of a year. These led to a number of videos being made, more recently by Tipster, on Vosh who is a very, very um, <clears throat> outspoken young man with very strong opinions politically, some of which encourage violence, I'm not a fan of that, to enforce his beliefs. But they're not the ones that have gotten the most attention. They are the clips that show him endorsing child-adult things. I can't say the word. You know the word. But the clips are out of context. And there is a context to them. It is quite frustrating, though, because no matter how much he now says, there isn't going to be a version of reality where he can justify having already said them because he's argued it in such a way that it seems to be an ironclad comment. But I do want to say for the sake of it, all the clips are out of context, and he is not arguing in favour of it. He was doing essentially reductio ad absurdum, in all instances. But, because they're clips, and they're never going to go away, it won't matter that he has made statements afterwards explaining he is against it. So, my position is that I am anti-child I don't think it's a good thing to have it. My frustration is I feel like there are other things that are bad for similar reasons that child is bad, but people don't really care about that. So, l let me run it through with you. Uh, why is child bad? Not creating child I mean, but like uh, purchasing it. So, like, why is it bad 
regardless of the way it, in which it's produced. Sure. Well, we know, I mean, we're, like, we don't even need to waste time, of course. Obviously, producing child <laughs> requires harming a child. So that's, I mean, that's off the bat. That's a pretty, um, that's a pretty easy bad. But when it comes to the actual, like, commodity, like, you, you filmed it or something. So why is that bad? Like, like, having that on your hard drive or something? I would say that buying something which in any way facilitates the exploitation of minors. Okay. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. It's the, the, the issue is that um, even if even if you're not hurting the kid, it's possible to like have a bunch of CP and never hurt the kid. The you're you're still like producing or you're you're consuming from an industry you're giving money to and you're just broadly celebrating in a sense um, the harm of children. Yeah. So my argument with vegan gains was that I can use that exact same logic to argue against a lot of the commodity production that we participate in today. Um, like a lot of our um, consumer electronics, our chocolate, our cocoa butter, if you look into the way these commodities are produced, a lot of them involve stuff like slavery, really, really bad labor practices. Some of them even involve child slavery, depending on what parts of the world this comes from. So my argument is it frustrates me when people will say that child is bad, and they're correct in saying that, but then they won't go ahead and say, oh, well, actually, we should be more critical of these types of commodity consumption as well. And that's why I said not that it's moral to consume CP, but that it would be more morally consistent to do so. Is it an edgy, provocateur way of phrasing that? Yeah, totally, and I acknowledge that, but that was the logic I was going through, you know? It won't matter, because the clips already exist, and people can try now to find a way to make it so people understand this is not what he actually meant. But to many, let's call them the casuals, it won't matter. And that's the problem. I don't condone people using it to claim he is in favor of it. I'm inclined to believe Vash when he says he's not. And for the sake of it, there is no justification. And so the idea that one has yet to present a moral or legal argument, yeah, nah, that tells everyone everything they think they already know about you when it comes to your own critical thought, which is why many believed you were being honest when you said it, that you were in favor of it. It's why many people accuse you of being Amos Yi 2.0. As with everything we cover in this series, I'd love to know what you think, so please do let me know in the comments down below. If I don't see you on Twitch for some murder fun time, have a fantastic Thursday, and thank you all for listening.